This is the QPad DX20, an optical gaming mouse with an ambidextrous design and 3500 DPI sensor. Striking a balance between performance and features, the DX20 aims to please. But does it? Over the last two weeks, I found out. And so then, the DX20. QPad's latest offering for those that want more of a lightweight mouse but to still have some serious gaming performance that they can unleash in their games. And taking this out of the box reveals a mouse that has a really nice design. This thing has full RGB customizability, you can do this in software, but the overall look and feel of the mouse is really high quality. It uses a matte finish on the top of the mouse which feels really nice in your hand but just generally the overall look of the mouse is definitely one of the best I've seen in recent years. Looking at the design though from more of an ergonomic point of view reveals that not only does this have an ambidextrous design so it's going to be good for lefties and righties but it's actually a fairly small mouse and as such those with larger hands may struggle a little bit while those with smaller hands will rejoice. On the top of the mouse you'll find the QPad logo which illuminates with RGB lighting, two DPI customizability buttons and a scroll wheel. Look to the top of the mouse and you'll find your left and right clicks. These both utilize Omron switches for maximum performance but you'll also find a braided USB cable to aid durability and appearance. On the underside you'll find a QPad logo, four pads to aid this thing gliding around and then the sensor which is a Pixar 3320. Looking at the side of the mouse, you'll find you have two additional buttons which are in its default state backwards and forwards, but you can customise these in the software if you want a different feature. So that's it for the design of the mouse, but what about its performance? How well does this thing play games? Well, to test this out I've been playing a lot of Gears of War Ultimate Edition and I can happily report that it was a very pleasurable experience. The mouse soon became an extension of my right arm and after it took a bit of getting used to, mainly because the mouse is definitely on the small side, I have to say that it felt very comfortable. The finish of the mouse meant that I wasn't getting particularly sweaty hands after a long period of time, and all the clicks were very satisfying, with the tracking being very accurate. A couple of problems to report would be that the DPI buttons on the top of the mouse do feel a lot cheaper than the rest of the mouse, but as you don't really need to use these, it's not too much of a big deal. The scroll wheel was really nice to use, but unfortunately the left click of the mouse every now and then would get a little bit sticky, I guess is the best way to describe it, which I'm not entirely sure why and is slightly disappointing, but this only happened every 10 minutes or so, and it didn't impact my performance negatively, it just made me go, oh, hold on, uh, every now and then. You can customise the DX20 with QPad software and you can do things like change button assignments, change the RGB lighting, change DPI, calibrate, things like that. And it's fairly easy to use, you can find everything you want to with a fair amount of ease, but it isn't necessarily the easiest software to use and the likes of Corsair and Logitech definitely do have better software. And while we're on that topic, how well does this thing compare against its competition? Well. Actually, pretty damn well. It performs really well, it feels really nice to the touch, and if you are someone that wants a smaller mouse, this is definitely a strong contender. For me though, I probably still prefer the overall feel and the hand of the M65 Pro, but if I was going for an uh, ambidextrous design, I still would say that I prefer Extrafy's M2, just because it's that little bit bigger, and as such fits my hand better. But I guess this just reiterates the importance of testing out mouse before you buy them. And so, overall, this wins the recommended award. If you're someone that wants a small, lightweight gaming mouse with some serious performance, then this easily comes highly recommended. And that's the end of the video. A massive thank you for you guys for checking it out. A massive thank you to QPad for providing the review sample used in this video. And if you do want to see the reviews of the M65 Pro and the Extrafy M2, you can find both of those in the top right hand corner. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe for more videos straight to your inbox. And yeah, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.